What's up everybody? Today we're going to take a look at the Future Builder widget and show you how that works and we're going to build an app that's similar to this where we'll start it and it'll have a little circular indicator until the content comes in and then it'll display it. So let's get into it. So the reason the Future Builder widget exists is for whenever you're retrieving a future, before you retrieve it you're obviously going to be waiting for the data and you won't have it. So this gives you an opportunity to display something while you're waiting. We're going to create an example today with Firestore because that's the way I would use it most. Since I use Firestore all the time, I feel like it's easy. And uh, it's, it'll be pretty simple to show off. So all right, to start we have this basic app where it just displays a text. Let's say we want to add some services. And here we want to add a database. And let's have a class called database and have a function that returns a future string and we'll call a get name and make sure it's asynchronous since it is a future the way I like to set things up I like to have only one return path so I like to define a return value up there and then make sure only one thing is getting returned then you can set that return to whatever. So then we obviously wrap it in a try catch so that we don't have any errors. And print E from there. And all right. So in Firestore, I have this simple data collection with a document 1234 and my name. So if we want to retrieve that name, let's re we're going to get back a document snapshot. And we need to await Firestore, which instance we do not have just yet. So final Firestore equals Firestore dot instance. And let's await that Firestore. Get the collection called data. The document that we called 1234 and let's get that data and then we can return the value of doc.data and name all right so that should be all we need so this is the future that we're going to be returning but before it is actually able to execute this thing we want to display a circular progress indicator so now let's go to our home page. We still have this hey there text. So we can remove that. And we're going to add in a future builder. And we can add in a builder class. The builder is going to have context and snapshot. And then you actually build whatever you wanted there. But the main thing, yeah, we're going to have a bunch of errors, is we have a future value. So you define a future. So this is what we're going to be waiting on. In our case, we're going to have the database. And we're going to have the get name function. This is going to be our future. Based on this future, we're going to build our UI. So if snapshot snapshot is the actual future that we're going to get so the snapshot is this but it has some extra information like the connection state and if the connection state is done then we want to actually display what we want to display so let's say return text and then we can do snapshot that data else if it's not done we want to return a circle circular progress indicator okay so that should work so waiting to get that data and there you go you saw it turned and retrieved that 
So just a couple things I wanted to clean up here in case someone actually wants to take this code and use it, which is going to be on GitHub if you do. So we can clean it up by having one return path. We can have retval here. I come from a C background, so this is why I think this is better to do it, but I don't know. Maybe it's not really necessary for Flutter. Maybe it doesn't give you that much value, but I like to do it. And then we can set up a separate function that returns a widget. Call it loaded screen. And we can return text and then name. And let's also pass in this name. So this doesn't really change anything, but if you guys want to take this code, it'll set up more nicely to use. You can create whatever widget you want in here and it'll display it once it's loaded. Also, you saw once we loaded it the first time, you saw the indicator, but let's say you want to reload, you won't actually be able to see it because this information is cached. So let's make it more explicit. So to prove to you that this is right, we can return our own future string that we create. Let's call it get local name. And we can return a future dot delayed after three seconds. And then we can return or just delayed so we know it's the difference. And if we change this to get local name, you can see now one, two, three, and then it will show up. So that's how a future builder works. It's really not that complicated, but it makes writing your, your code and displaying the correct UI a lot simpler. But okay, that's it for this video. This code will be on GitHub, like I said. It'll be pretty easy to use. You could add it on your own screens that you need in here. Um, if you have any questions or anything, please leave it in the comments. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.